Binge the full week ad free over patreon.com slash inspired disorder. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality. Gremlins, the 1984 classic horror Christmas movie, kids movie, I guess. I watched it as a kid. I don't know if I watched it in 84. I was only, th- well, I was uh, four years old back when this movie came out. So I probably, it probably took a while for me to watch it. I haven't revisited this movie or this franchise in forever. I will be reviewing Gremlins 2 next week. Uh, but yeah, I dipped my toes back in, actually just dove right back into the Gremlins universe, uh, rewatching Gremlins. And, uh, you know, it's, does it hold up? Nah, it's okay. It's okay. Out of the two, I think one is a little bit better than Gremlins 2, but I'll talk probably more about that in uh, the next review. Uh, But this one's okay. I mean, he goes, it's the inventor dad's kind of out trying to make deals, which the inventor dad is kind of adorable. You know, he, I mean, he's a sweet guy throughout this movie. Uh, He's literally just invents things and he tries to sell them. For whatever reason, I mean, this movie takes place during Christmas time. For whatever reason, they have inventor conferences on Christmas. So he is out of town when a lot of this movie takes place. But he's looking for a gift for his kid. Goes into this uh, old Asian man shop. Or he gets led there by a kid that he meets on the street of Chinatown. Uh, he goes into this shop that's just got a bunch of different, uh, you know, thr- it's like a thrift shop that just has uh, just tons of different things. And uh, he's trying to sell this old man on his his like bathroom buddy or whatever and uh, is hearing this like this adorable little singing in the background comes to comes to find out that it's a gremlin. It's gizmo. Oh, it ends up being called gizmo, uh, which is a stuffed animal I remember having as a child. Uh, If you shook him, he would make his uh, gizmo sounds. Right. Because he, you know, his squeaks. Which Gizmo, as far as the adorability, if that's a word of Gizmo, uh, was in question, he holds up. Very, he's not a lot, he's not as involved in this movie as I remember. Well, I guess I didn't ever really think about it, but uh, the movie Gremlins doesn't focus on Gizmo quite as much as uh, you might think. Um, but when it does, he's adorable. So he gets this gift for his kid, this mogwai, and, uh, there are some rules for the mogwai. Can't, can't be around bright lights, sunlight, probably kill him. Uh, so no bright lights got to be in the dark. Uh, don't feed them. Don't get them wet. Doesn't really say why, but don't get them wet. Uh, it's not good. Um, and don't feed them after midnight, which that rule has always bothered me because at what point after midnight, like I get like if it's it's like 1230 a.m., probably shouldn't feed them. Right. That's after midnight. But what if you wake up super early? You're one of those people that wakes up super early. You wake up at like three in the morning, four in the morning, five in the morning. At what point is it after midnight to be feeding? Do I have to wait for noon? Maybe from noon to midnight, that's when they're they're like on a strict uh like uh she's they're on like a strict uh intermediate fasting kind of program for these mogwai. Uh but that always bothered me. Uh but of course the kid gets this this uh mogwai and everything goes wrong. But there's this there's like some side characters that are very interesting to this movie also. Um because the kid, the the main character in this, uh works at a bank. But there's like this evil cat lady. And what I mean, evil cat lady. She like goes into the bank. Like the her the his dog apparently broke one of her snowman sculptures out on her lawn. Which, believing that she would have any Christmas de- de- decorations anyway, not whatever. But she's evil cat lady. Whatever. She has her snow thing. She hates this dog. She goes to the bank, cuts in front of the line. Brought you know whatever. She's just an asshole. She doesn't. She has zero regard for anybody. All she cares about are her cats, really. She doesn't care about humans. She really hates dogs. And she, like, talks about how she wants to kill his dog with her bare hands. In, while he's at work, 
in front of like the rest of the people in town. It's like one of the most evil people. And she's not even the bad guy of this. She gets her comeuppance, which is kind of fun, you know, because eventually the, you know, all the things go wrong with with Gizmo. He ends up getting wet, which when they get wet, they multiply. Uh, So now there's a bunch of little adorable Gizmos everywhere. Uh, But then if you feed them, then they turn evil. Once they turn evil, then they start fucking with shit. And, uh, you know, we find out about how gremlins fuck with shit by the town's racist drunk uh who just hates everything that's not made in the US uh blames you know everything that's wrong in the world is because of foreign stuff he's just and he's drunk all the time uh but he like kind of coins the phrase gremlins because that's they're the they're the the little creatures that come from Asia that get into her electronics and and mechanical things and break them down that's the reason why his his volkswagen bug doesn't work because there's gremlins because it's a, a foreign car um so you have like evil cat lady you have super racist drunk guy not super racist but definitely racist drunk guy which for the time you know was just probably very just normal i mean it was very casual racism but definitely a racist drunk guy very xenophobic um and even the gremlins kind of look like there's there's scenes where like they're they take over a bar and for whatever reason the girl uh is still working the bar as if these gremlins are paying customers or whatever like oh, i'm trapped here at work instead of just getting out like there's some kind of cr- there's some goofiness to this movie i mean it is like and i remember it as a kid enjoying it but also not really getting how stupid it is that anybody would stay working at the bar when it's full of gremlins of these little monsters. But the way they make they, these gremlins look almost looks like racist caricatures. Like, like they are the the unwanted problem people of society, and it, it's it's kind of it's kind of weird. They change the racism for the second film in the series, but the first one, it definitely feels like they're, uh, let's just say the character designers uh, really, and costume designers for these characters really were looking at maybe the higher melanin content, urban kind of look and feel, uh, stereotypes. Uh, which I find that a little problematic. There's there's definitely some issues with this movie as far as race. Uh, one of the main characters uh, is, I mean, he's a side character, but you know, he's he's very. I mean, even the there, the, it's very. It has it's mild problematic parts. Like, I would imagine the only reason Gizmo or Gremlins as a film isn't like quote unquote canceled. It's because there's no like actor who's been like actively racist. It's just like a lot of themes and a lot of th- things in this uh, don't hold up in in modern society. Uh, but it gets really goofy when the gremlins start taking over the city. It's just all mayhem occurs, uh, which is fun. You know, it's fun to watch them and it's fun to watch their battles. You know, and and to to see. Uh, you know them try and fight these gremlins these monsters everybody's scared there's this like story like this the love interest in this movie hates christmas right she's a bah humbug whatever there's a story she tells of why she hates christmas which is insanely dark right especially for a kids movie she's talking about this time how her dad used to dress up like santa and shimmy down the chimney to make it all realistic when he would display the the things. But what she didn't know one Christmas after she lit a fire and the, the house started filling up with smoke is that her dad was actually stuck in the chimney and she killed him by lighting the fire. And he was like pulled. And when the moment when she when the fireman pulled her dad out of the chimney, that's when she knew that Santa wasn't real. It's like, what the fuck? That's it's like this the darkest story first a crazy story like it's a story that you could almost imagine somebody out there having like somebody had a dad that was really into christmas and like for whatever reason 
got in an argument with his wife about the abil- his ability to shimmy down a chimney to be more authentic, and he gets stuck, and the next thing you know, he's dead. Like, that almost feels like like some Florida man kind of thing. Um, but, yeah, super dark and out of nowhere. And kind of the ridiculous part that if only anybody in this movie had flashlights... It would have been like they would they they're like laser beams they because the the bright lights they don't like bright lights it hurts them so you get some high power flashlights and you're pretty good but of course you know all the drama takes place at night which is you know makes sense you know it's it's a fun movie it's a fun movie I could understand why I liked it as a kid when it gets goofy and the gremlins start wreaking havoc on the town you're seeing adults not being able to cope cope with basic shit uh, is all fun. Uh, but yeah, it didn't hold up as much as I, I, I thought. And, uh, a lot more, not overt racism. It's not like 48 hours racism, but it's like clearly the writers of this and the people in charge of this didn't really have, have an issue with the, uh, the similarities that these, uh, monsters have with minorities. Uh, but yeah, gremlins from 1984. I mean, times have changed. I can't imagine. I, I, it would be fun to see a remake. Like if they go real dark on a gremlins remake and not try and make it for kids. Cause this is like loosely for kids, but also super dark. Uh, but anyway, check it out if you want. I don't know where you can stream it. I own it. Uh, but yeah, check it out. Gremlins. Go get yourself some amazing coffee from our friends over at stationhousecoffee.com. Follow stationhouse coffee on Instagram, but make sure you order yourself some small batch, single origin, premium coffee brewed in Thetford Center, Vermont, shipped directly to you, no matter where you are. Uh, Just hit them up over at stationhousecoffee.com. Give them a follow, Station House Coffee on Instagram, and get yourself some of the best coffee on the planet Earth. New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on IGTV, YouTube, and everywhere else podcasts are found. Binge the full week ad free over at patreon.com slash inspired disorder. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at inspireddisorder.com. And follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful week, everybody. Peace out!